Hello out there. The purpose of today's video lesson is to talk to you about how you should be learning the properties of exponents so that uh, you don't fall guilty to some of the mistakes that are really common among students who um, try to memorize shortcuts uh, without ever trying to understand those very shortcuts. Um, so I'm just going to show you some examples that I've seen over my years of teaching. Uh, for example, uh, if a student is asked to uh, evaluate 3 to the 4th power times 3 to the 3rd power, they would say it's 9 to the 7th power. Multiplying 3 times 3 is 9, and somehow inexplicably adding 4 um, plus 3 equals 7. That's pretty awful. Also, um, I've seen 9 to the, and then 4 times 3 is 12, 9 to the 12th power. Uh, either of these is, is frowny face. Not very good. Um, if you know your math and you understand what's going on, there's 4 multiples of 3 and an additional 3 multiples of 3 for a grand total of 7 multiples of 3. So we can add the exponents, and there's a reason why we add the exponents, and keep the base the same and not multiply them together. So the point I'd like to make in this video is if we strive to learn our shortcuts while understanding the reason behind those shortcuts, we're going to be much better and more productive in our learning of mathematics. We're not going to be stumbling upon some of the crazy mistakes that we tend to make when we're not thinking about the reasoning behind our work. Here's another really common mistake. Students will see the 3 and the 7, and they remember here you're supposed to add exponents, so they'll add the exponents here and say that that's 3 to the 10th. It makes no sense. In fact, this is 3 to the 21st power. There are three sets of seven sets of threes for a grand total of 21 threes. Um, here, a very, very common mistake, when students are working in algebra simplification, they'll take 2 times x squared to the fifth power. They're so concentrating on the exponents, they know they're supposed to multiply the exponents, and 2 times 5 equals 10 is 2x to the 10th. So that is reflective of a student who's memorizing shortcuts without actually thinking about what they're doing. This is actually 2x squared repeated five times for a grand total of two, five twos for 32 and uh, 10 x's for x to the 10th power. Another one, <clears throat> I see this every year, even though I try to prevent it from happening, it still happens. Students will divide the fives and then say, well, that's just the fives cancel, and so there's just one. It's just total crazy talk. Uh, there are eight sets of five divided by three sets of five, so for a grand total of five sets of five. That's what should have happened. Another common mistake, students will multiply the two times the five. They'll multiply the bases and then take the exponent, like two times five is 10, and then we're gonna square the 10 to get 100. There's an order of operations that says we need to do our exponents first and then multiply. So, um, and then the last uh, mistake, actually, no, that is the last mistake uh, of the common mistakes that I uh, tend to see. There are more, but these are some of the most common. And the point of showing you these mistakes is to demonstrate how if you don't understand the, the shortcuts, the properties that you're using, then you're likely to make a variety of very careless mistakes. So, um, here on the screen, there are three definitions, and when we use any of these definitions for this particular uh, unit, I'm going to ask you to state the definition that you're using. So what do I mean by that? Well, for example, if I say that 3 to the 5th is 243, which it is, um, then I would have to explain why. Why is 3 to the 5th 243? And the answer is because 3 to the 5th is equal to 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. That's what an exponent means. It means multiply the base that number of times. Definition of negative exponent. a to the negative m power is equal to 1 over a to the m. What does that look like? If I have 3 to the negative fifth and I don't like negative exponents, I simply reciprocate. That is 1 divided by 3 to the positive fifth power. Definition of zero exponent, what does that look like? Well, if I have a to the zero power, I get one. a is any number. Any number you can think of, take it to the zero power, it equals one. Here's an algebraic expression, 3x squared minus 5x. I'm raising it all to the zero power. Well, guess what? That's one. Three to the zero, you know what that is? That's one. I have an earlier video where I talk about why, but this is the what. By definition, the zero exponent is defined to make all numbers of the base one. What follows are two, let me enlarge these, of the five properties that you're going to be expected to know. The first is the product rule and the second is the quotient rule. And they're essentially the same thing because they're dealing with multiplication. Division is just multiplication in disguise. Anyway, the 
um, product rule says if you multiply two numbers at the same base, that's why these are both a's, then you can keep the base and then just add the exponents together and that will be the total number of the exponent. That is, there's five sets of three and times three sets of three for a grand total of eight factors of three. Here are two factors of seven. Here's x factors of seven. I don't know how many, but it's a total of two plus x factors of seven in total. In quotient rule, when we divide, instead of uh, multiplying where we add the total number of factors, when we divide two common factors, we get one. So we're going to um, uh, subtract off all of the common factors and then just see how many are left over. So if I have a to the m over a to the n, that's the same as a to the m minus n. What does that look like? 3 to the fifth divided by 3 squared can be expressed as 3 cubed. There's three extra sets of 3 on the top. 5 to the sixth fifth rather over 5 to the sixth we can apply the quotient rule and subtract 5 minus 6 is negative 1 so x to the negative 1 is the result and we know from our definitions that that's also equal to 1 over x <coughs> three more properties <clears throat> Power of a product. If you multiply two numbers together to a power, you can distribute the power into the product. 3x to the fourth, for example, is actually 3 to the fourth times x to the fourth. Or if we had 5 squared times 2 squared, instead of multiplying all those out, you could make 5 times 2 squared. It's the same property here in reverse. You can see it's just different direction. 10 squared is easy to do. It's 100, so that's easier than multiplying 25 by 4. Not that that's much more difficult, but you can see the reasoning for the use of this property in reverse. Power of a quotient. You can distribute the exponent into a fraction. That's nice if you have 3 fifths squared and you don't want to work with fractions. We'll just square the 3 and square the 5. You get 9 20 fifths. Easy peasy. Or if you had 80, 81 to the 4th over 9 to the 4th and you don't want to take 81 to the 4th power, well, they're both the same power, so we can reverse the quotient rule, or power of a quotient, rather, and just make 81 ninths to the 4th power, which is 9 to the 4th power. That's just reduced the amount of work I had to do. Simplified, if you will. Finally, there's power of a power. This is counting the number of sets of exponents, so you're going to multiply the exponents, like x to the 5th. Three sets of that make a total of 15 factors of x. 5 to the x, 3 sets of that, make 3x total factors of 5. And again, I went through that rather quickly. <clears throat> the reason behind all these properties is explained in earlier videos, as I mentioned. But the reason I explain all of these before showing how to do some of the homework that you're going to be asked to do, if you're in my class anyway, is um, I want you to actually think about the shortcut, not just apply the shortcut. Now, in practice, in the real world, if you were asked to simplify 5 squared times 2, you would just say that's 50. Most normal people can do that. It's not a big deal. But I want us to understand that this is actually a type of mathematics that's following a certain set of rules. Now, the earlier problems, it's just basic. It's going to be a lot of definitions. But here's how I'm going to justify my statement. First of all, 5 squared equals 5 times 5. That's the definition of exponents. This is a side note, you don't have to do this in your homework, but this is an example. Don't multiply the 5 times the 2 and then square it. That's a no bueno. But the order of operations is the other rule. So I put actually for all three of these first three problems, it all deals with the definition of exponents and order of operations. That's what the author of this textbook here was trying to get you to understand or demonstrate. So for this one, we should know what 5 squared is and we should know we have to square first and then multiply by the 2. In the second exercise, negative 2 to the 6th power, this is uh, very similar to number 5, so you'd ask yourself, what's the difference? Um, well, I'll show you. First of all, negative 2 to the 6th power is negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2, which is a yeah, total of 6 of them. That's a total of uh, uh, 64. That is the definition of exponents, which means essentially I have 6 of these factors all multiplied together. If I take six negative twos and multiply them all together, I'd have three positive fours, which multiply together to give me 16 times four, or 64. So what am I doing here? Instead of having to write all this stuff out, I'm using my definition of exponents to just jump straight to the result. What's the relationship between number three and number five? Well, it all has to do with the order of operations. So for the order of operations, I have really what a negative two to the sixth power is, is negative one times two to the sixth. You can see the negative in parentheses is grouping the negative with the two, and that's taken to the sixth power. 
without the parentheses, that's taking 2 to the 6th power and then multiplying by negative 1. That is the order of operations. Exponents first, then multiply, and that's how we get negative 64. And if you're a doubter, you can check any normal calculator. If you put parentheses, negative 2 to the 6th power, you get the positive result. And if you leave the parentheses out, <clears throat> your calculator knows the order of operations. It'll expone first, and then it'll make negative. All this stuff should be checked on the calculator, even if it's simple, just to make sure that you're not making some sort of crazy mistake like the ones I demonstrated earlier. These ones are just definition of zero exponent and order of operations, just like the first set. So, so negative 3 to the 0 is 1. There's nothing more than definition of 0 exponent. That's it. For number 9, negative 3 to the 0 is actually negative 1. That's, again, where we use 0 exponent and order of operations. Order of operations, I do the exponent first, then multiply by negative 1, and that's how I get that result, as verified by the calculator. Number 4 is just the definition of negative exponents. So by definition, 4 to the negative 3 is defined as the reciprocal of uh, 4 to the 3rd. So that's 1 over 4 to the 3rd, and that's 1 over 64. Now, I could explain this another way just by demonstrating that uh, if I have uh, 4 to the negative 3, I could show that's 4 to the negative 1 to the 3rd power. I'm reversing power of a power, which 1 or 4 to the negative 1 is 1 quarter. That's definition of negative exponent. And then I could do power of a quotient and end up with 1 over 64. Now, this gets into some of the more, um, anything after number 10, you should be showing in two different ways. There should be the shorthand approach. Show me the way that you should be doing this in the working mathematics world, the shortcut, the quickest possible way to get there. Tell me what you used. So I used the definition of negative exponents to get there. Then I would like you to try to pick this apart and show me that you can get to that result using a different set of rules. So um, I did use definition of negative exponent again, but I used it in conjunction with a series of other properties and definitions. So um, that's going to be the harder part for some of you. Um, but at the very minimum, we have to make sure everybody can do the shortcut, identify what shortcut they're using, and then try as you best you can, and it'll be easier for the more complicated problems, oddly enough, um, to break this apart to little in micro uh, incremental steps so that you can justify, look, I can get there using the best shortcut, but here's demonstrating that it all makes sense because I can use any combination of properties and still get to the same result. So here comes number 13, just to give you another example of that secondary method. First, the shortcut. If you have 2 squared times 2 to the third, you should recognize that that's a total of five sets of two. That's called the product rule. So I name the product rule. I apply the product rule. This is the math we're trying to learn. This is the rule that allows us to do it. That's the shortcut. And then I'm going to use a longer method to demonstrate that the shortcut works or why the shortcut works. So here's definition of exponents. 2 squared is just 2 times 2. 2 cubed is 2 times 2 times 2, and when I multiply 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, I get 2 to the fifth, which is 32. So we don't use this when we're asked to simplify this. We're using a shortcut instead. And uh, the same thing uh, can be done this way. I could say order of operations means I should take the exponents first. So 2 squared is 4, and 2 cubed is 8. And then 8 times 4 is 32. So that's two different ways to get there that's a longer method than the shortcut we're supposed to be learning. So once again, I'm trying to get you to say, all right, here's the best way, quickest way to get an answer. Here's demonstration why the answer makes sense or how the answer gets to where it gets. It's hard to put all that into words. Notice again, I was able to check all these with the calculator. Um, now, get into some more of the uh, other properties. Power of a power is another shortcut, another property that we can use. So if we have 2 to the 3rd, that's really 2 to the 6th power, which is 64. That's what we're going to be memorizing. That's our shortcut. But where does that shortcut come from? Why does it work? Well, according to the definition of exponents, 2 squared cubed is actually 2 squared times 2 squared times 2 squared. So that's definition of exponents. And whoa. And then a uh, further definition of exponents, I'm taking all the 2 squareds and making them into 2 times 2, and then I multiply the 2's together, that's 2 to the 6th by definition of exponents, which is 64. 
So why do I multiply the exponents? Because I have three sets of two twos, and that's a total of six twos. Um, now, for the product rule, I'm jumping down to number 19 here, sorry. In number 19, we have 3 to the negative 1 times 3 to the 1 is equal to 3 to the negative 1 plus 1. That's what the product rule says. You can add the exponents if the bases are the same, and that gives us 3 to the negative 2, and by definition of negative exponents, that gives us 1 ninth. So that's the way that we're supposed to simplify this product. How else could I do that? Definition of negative exponents, I could do that first. 3 to the negative 3 is really 1 over, whoa, that just went really fast, 1 over 3 cubed times 3, which is 1 27th times 3, which is 3 27ths, or just 1 ninth. So you can get there the old-fashioned way with only one definition of negative exponents there. It's just another way to get there to demonstrate that you have a deeper level of understanding than just memorizing shortcut. All right, I just have a couple more examples. The last, or last one in this slide is uh, 2 to the 8th over 2 to the 4th. Again, the shortcut, we are supposed to say the bases are the same, which means we can subtract the exponents, 2 to the 4th, which is 16. Or with the definition of exponents, we can write out 8 factors of 2, 4 factors of 2 in the denominator. Then by order of operations, we can multiply, divide in any order. So we divide all the ones that we can divide out to 1s, and then we count the remainder of factors, and there are 4 factors of 2 in the numerator. So some of my try-hardest students, the ones that are uh, always looking for perfection, are going to be the most confused by this because the last part of every one of these is open-ended. You have to make a decision. How can you show this using a different set of rules? It's up to you. It's different for every student in terms of how they see it. What I'm really interested in is this level of understanding. Why do I subtract the exponents? Well, because we're dividing out common factors and I have the leftovers. If we keep reminding ourselves why, then we're going to know what the what is, and then we're not going to make those kinds of silly mistakes that I demonstrated in the beginning. Um, all right, so uh, just to, like I say, a couple more examples. First, um, we get into the more algebraic ones. We have unknowns, but they are the same base to different powers. Product rule says we can add the exponents. That's the shortcut. That's what we're trying to learn. It's called the product rule. So this is the minimum requirement. Now, show me why it works. Definition of exponents, there are three x's and another seven x's for a grand total of 10 x's. That's why we add. Over here, we have power of a power. Shortcut says multiply the exponents x to the third to the seventh is actually x to the 21st power. Why does that work? Well, according to the definition of exponents, we have seven sets of x to the third, which, according to the product rule, I can just add up all the exponents, because the bases are the same, and then get x to the 21 in total. So we're not going to do this, which is why we invented the shortcut, so we don't have to do this. But on this assignment, I want you to show me the origins of the shortcut tell me why this is an advantageous thing to do. Again, the goal here is to make sure that you don't make the kind of silly mistakes that come out of nonsense. If you understand the basis of the exponent rules, then you won't misapply them. Now, for these algebraic statements, there's two ways that you can check your answers for algebraic statements. If you have x's only, then you can just make a function, x cubed times x to the seventh, and it will produce a graph. You can take your answer, x to the 10th. It also produces the same graph, which means they are the same. If you have multiple unknowns, you can change uh, those unknowns to any other constants, a through um, whatever in the alphabet, not x, y, or t. Anyway, you can put a in and uh, put in the original expression. Instead of x's, we use a's and put in my answer. And then you change the slider to anything but 1 or 0 and verify that each expression gives you the same result. That means these are equivalent expressions. So that's a lot to go on. This is probably one of my longest videos ever. Uh, but don't forget, uh, these are the definitions in Y, and uh, these are the properties, and these are the mistakes that you should not make. All right, thanks for watching. Have a good day.